We have, in fact, three statements. First, from President Trump, quoting now, Gary has been my chief economic advisor, did a superb job in driving our agenda, helping to deliver historic tax cuts and reforms, and unleashing the American economy once again. He is a rare talent, and I thank him for his dedicated service to the American people. From White House Chief of Staff, John Kelly, Gary has served his country with great distinction, dedicating his skill and leadership to grow the U.S. economy and pass historic tax reforms. Form. I will miss having him as a partner in the White House, but he departs having made a real impact on the lives of the American people. And from Gary Cohn himself, it has been an honor to serve my country and enact pro-growth economic policies to benefit the American people, in particular the passage of historic tax reform. I am grateful to the president for giving me this opportunity and wish him and the administration great success in the future. All past tense. Uh, Gary Cohn has resigned as National Economic Director. Uh, of note, he was not at the news conference today uh, with the President and the visiting dignitary. Gary Cohn out as National Economic Director. Back to you. All right, Hampton Pearson out of Washington for us. Thank you, Hampton. For more on this, let's bring in Eamon Javers. And the resignation, Eamon, comes uh, just as we seem to be on the precipice of a brewing trade war. Yeah, that's right. But then there were a couple of tales that Hampton says today that this was likely to happen. One was that Gary Cohn, who had been a relatively uh, religious attendee of the news conferences, did not show up. There was an, actually an empty chair right in front of where I was sitting uh, for someone on the White House staff. We're not clear if it was Gary or not, uh, but he's usually in the room for those things. He was not. I was told repeatedly today by White House officials that if Gary resigned, it's not going to be because of tariffs. It's going to be because of an accumulation of things. That is, uh, that Gary, they suggested to me, is too mature to simply not get his way on tariffs and resign uh, on principle on that issue alone, that it would be because of a number of things. So White House officials were not pushing back throughout the day today on the idea that Gary Cohn uh, might, re might resign from his position here. Also, interestingly, uh, Gary told his interns on his staff as recently as yesterday to make sure that they got the full experience out of being at the White House and found it uh, sort of wistful and, wistful and, and hoping to uh, make sure that his interns got the most out of their experience. Uh, it sounded to people who heard that like uh, he was considering leaving as well. So uh, this is not necessarily a surprise. Cohn has been talked about as somebody who might resign from this White House ever since the Charlottesville incident over the summer in which he was pressured by his family uh, to consider resignation given uh, the president's equivocation on, on those racial incidents in Charlottesville, Virginia last year. Uh, it didn't happen then. It does happen now. Uh, and now it leaves the sort of nationalist economic contingent inside the White House. Peter Navarro, Wilbur Ross, who was at the press availability today, uh, in the ascendancy within the uh, Trump orbit. Uh, that Gary Cohn had been said to have been working on an, uh, an event for Thursday, in which he would bring a number of CEOs who stood to benefit from, uh, or who, who stood to loss, lose rather, from tariffs uh, into the White House to make their argument to the president. That, uh, it would seem, will not happen now. Uh, and Peter Navarro and Wilbur Ross, who have been bringing in CEOs who will benefit from those tariffs, uh, will be in the ascendancy militia. All right, Eamon, thanks so much. Eamon Javers joining us on the phone. Um, as Eamon had mentioned, according to his sources, it wasn't simply because of the tariff issue that Gary Cohn resigned. But regardless of, of why he resigned or the reasons behind it, Wall Street just lost their top deputy in the White House. And as you had pointed out, probably one of the last barriers standing in the way of the Trump administration and tariffs in terms of somebody objecting to them in the White House, he's gone now. Right. What does this mean for the markets? Uh, again, I don't think this is very good for the markets because the market's going to say, okay, what else is going to go on? Are we going to have more debt piled on now? All the other nationalist agendas that are out there that potentially could be harmful to the market, I think the market's going to shoot first and ask questions later. So this, again, we're in this period of extreme political volatility that are affecting
affecting asset prices, and the market's not reacting by. Yeah, we're showing you the ETFs right now because the futures are closed, but right now it looks like the Dow uh, ETF would be down by more than a percent. The S&P as well as the NASDAQ down about 1% apiece. It's interesting to think about before January how few 1% days that we had. Yeah. Two days ago, or excuse me, on Monday, yesterday, we had this rip in the market back when it looked like maybe the tariff, uh, the trade war wasn't as likely. So, you know, this sort of back and forth is not particularly great, especially when you think about, you know, what led the market back from February 9th. It was a concentration of the prior leaders, but there's a lot of stuff that haven't gotten back on their horses. We are still in a downtrend, and I think it is a market now where you actually want to kind of sell rips for all intents and purposes and reevaluate what 2018 from a return environment is going to look like Given all the uncertainty politically as we head into the midterms, just, you know, think about that over the course of the spring and summer. Uh, we should mention that the dollar is showing a little bit of weakness on this news. We want to bring in Larry Kudlow now, who joins us on the fast line. Larry, what does this mean in terms of trade? Well, it's not great. I can say that. I mean, in recent days, I've talked to Gary. I personally urged him to stay. He, he didn't commit, but and I've done it on the air. You've heard me do it. I think he did a great job. I think he has a good staff. I think he's been a powerful force. So I'm quite sorry that this is true. I mean, I'm reading the New York Times website, and the president has issued a statement. So I guess we know it's true. Um, you know, your, uh, some of your colleagues are saying about the trade story. You're asking. I, I think it's a turn for the worse, okay? You know, the meeting, he was trying to set up a very, very good, it was a great idea um, to have the manufacturers who use steel come in and talk to the president and give him the other side of the story. But I was told today, and I reported this on Closing Bell, uh, that that meeting was not on the calendar and was never put on the calendar. Now, what role that might play in, in Gary's uh, decision, I, I cannot say. But I, I think he did a great job. I'm really sorry he's leaving. And we'll see who the president appoints. I mean, look, the president tends to have balance where there are these uh, disagreements. He tends to have balance. And the National Economic Council has a very broad reach, you know, in terms of policy everywhere. Infrastructure, for example, taxes, regulations, energy, and so forth, um, including health care. So I, I, don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that the cause for freer trade, freer, mind you, uh, is over. Um, but we'll see. We'll see who was appointed. And someone can take over. He's got very good people uh, around him. Um, so we'll see. I, I, I don't know. I personally regret this very much. Well, Larry, do you think that he, the president would actually appoint another top economic advisor who would advise him against tariffs at this point? I mean, when you say that, that, that the case for freer trade is not over by any means because of, of Gary Cohn's resignation, who carries the torch for freer trade at this point? Well, you're left uh, basically with um, Stephen Mnuchin. Um, and you're also left with Kevin Hassett from the CEA. And you're also left with a number of people on the National Economic Council uh, who very much supported Gary's effort to tamp this down. I mean, look, uh, Melissa, I, my view has been blanket tariffs are very bad. That's what I oppose. Um, however, where there's uh, unfair trading practices, and you don't have to look far in the map, it's China. So... To me, targeted tariffs that might lead to negotiations, and I would have gone after China. I wouldn't have gone after Canada. I think that was a, that is still an error. If they had, it's going to happen, I guess. I wouldn't go after the EU. I, I wouldn't let NAFTA hang in the balance. If Ch if China is the problem, and they certainly are an intellectual property right, that's for sure, then go after them. Targeted tariffs, but don't have a blanket tariff. Now, there are other people in the White House who share this view that trade actions would be okay as long as they're targeted and presumably temporary in, in lieu of negotiations. So I, there are plenty of people around who hold that view. There's no purism here. Um, but, again, I come back to this. I think Cohn did a good job, served the country well, and, um, you know, we're going to miss him. We're going to miss him. But, look, on the other hand, the president said this at his news conference today with the Swedish premier. Um, lots of people come to the White House. Um, Lots of people would like these jobs, and life will go on. Life will go on. And, you know, President cut taxes, he rolled back regulations, he's promoting energy, the economy is going very well. So I just don't want to push the panic button. And I might also add, if anyone talks about it, um, the economic fundamentals, particularly profits from the bottom up, are looking better and better. 
So I, I just, right. just don't panic. Don't panic okay. over this. Well, I mean, already <laughs> the markets are showing a little bit of panic. I mean, we are looking at the Dow ETF, the S&P ETF, um, down by about a percent in the after hours trade. You mentioned Mnuchin and Hassett as sort of being the standard bearers for freer trade. The markets are interpreting this as if freer trade is really in jeopardy. Is that the right takeaway? What's your What's your take on, on how the market is reacting? Don't jump to hasty conclusions. That's the best advice I can sincerely give you. Don't jump to hasty conclusions, okay? I've seen this before. Uh, even when I worked in there with Reagan years ago, we had staff changes at the highest level. Life went on. Uh, so I really would suggest to investors, wait and see. Don't make any hasty judgments right now. And by the by, the economy is in very good shape. So, um, gee whiz, hold on. Hang on for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Let's see what the president says more. Let's see who is the candidate right. for this position and other positions. You know, just don't just don't tear the wall down. Don't jump off the cliff, please. No one jump off the cliff, Melissa. Uh, uh, you know, the very calm words is the markets are down by about one and a half percent at this time. Larry, if the president called and he asked you, would you serve? Uh, I don't have any comment on that. I'm not even thinking about that. right? All right. Larry, th thank you very much I've, uh, for phoning I've in. Been, I've been calling the biggest supporter. Larry anyway, Kudlow. thank you, Melissa. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Thanks, Larry. Larry Kudlow. Um, I... What's your, so we're so seeing the, take, the losses steepen at this point. Right, but let's take the opposite side. Sure. Let's, let's take Larry's advice and not panic and say, this is all part of a bigger negotiating tactic. And at the end of this, we come out with a freer system because that is the, the White House position that they're going to come out, they're going to impose these blanket tariffs, and other people are going to react in a positive way for the U.S. That is the, that is the, the, the positive spin. That you can put on. Do you buy that? Spin? No, not one bit. But I want to. I want to try to. I want to present both sides, right? I'm a trader, so at some point, this negativity does turn into something I want to buy. That's not today, just to be very clear. Uh, but that you're going to start to look at and say, okay, maybe it's not as bad as we think. Not today. Yeah, and there just is no reason to panic. But at the end of the day, when you think about it, there's no one opposing some of these protectionist policies. When you think about the market, uh, Larry mentioned on numerous occasions how well the economy is doing, how well companies' profits are doing. These are the sort of things that will turn a cycle if it goes on too long. So this is a really important input. No reason to panic right now in the aftermarket. Gary Cohn officially resigns and the markets are tanking. He was the only voice of reason that could have convinced Donald Trump not to proceed with his tariffs idea. Now that he's gone, the tariffs officially have gotten the green light. Visit marketcrash.money marketcrash.money to find out the many reasons why there is a great possibility of a market crash in 2018. Find out, more importantly, how you can take advantage of the stock market crash before it takes advantage of you. If you're a new trader, or an experienced trader looking for new ideas and strategies. The market environment is completely changing in 2018, so the strategies that have worked in the last eight to nine years are no longer going to be producing the results. Visit marketcrash.money. Hit the How to Profit button. Schedule a consultation. Whether you want to trade or whether you want to put a long-term strategy that will protect your investments. It would be the best time that you could spend in the next 24 hours to gain some insight of successful strategies that have worked recently in the last couple of months and produced returns to the extent of 3,800%. If you would like to know how you can accomplish similar returns, again, hit the How to Profit button and schedule your consultation. Thank you. We'll see you soon.